Hello and welcome to my channel, I Win to Lose Gaming. I finally took the dive to see what it's like to be a completely free to play player in Genshin Impact in 2024. And let me just say, it was not what I expected. Oh my god, oh my god, no way. This is just a random 10 pole. Genshin Impact has been around for many years at this point, and I was wondering what it's like for a new player diving into this game in 2024. And if you're one of the 10 people on this planet that still hasn't played Genshin Impact yet, Genshin Impact. Well, I'm impressed. At this point, everyone that has been tertiarily interested in the animus and waifus has played the game. Because after all, don't you have phones? Do you guys not have phones? Yeah, you guys that, all have phones, phone, right? So I took the dive to see what it's like to be a new player in this game, and I set out on my journey to get to Adventure Rank 25 as fast as I could. Now, what does it take to get to Adventure Rank 25? A total of 46,400 Adventure Rank experience. That sounds like a lot, and well, it actually is. I began my typical hero's journey with an epic name fitting for the title of a hero who will save the world. Topato. With his trusty flying can of emergency food and his trusty dull blade, Topato set out on his long and arduous journey across Teyvat. Now you might be surprised to see me, a cultured gamer, select the Metro Midriff bearing male MC, but I chose it for optimization reasons. Since I'll be using the MC a lot in this playthrough, short male models are able to b-hop much faster than short female models. This likely saved me a ton of time over the course of this journey, as you're able to keep your momentum going even with zero stamina for quite a while with b-hopping. Anyway, hopping like a bunny for all eternity aside, the beginning is quite linear and thus straightforward. And the pacing is, well, I had to bring in my trusty pet mouse, Chuck, to help me out here. Chuck is a pro at clicking incredibly fast because I'm definitely paying attention to what this totally not suspicious eye-patched individual is telling me. After shooting down a giant dragon, some more cutscenes, and then some more hard work from Chuck, I'm finally able to do my first 10 pole. And we got... A sacrificial sword. Woohoo! I'm so sorry, Dull Blade. It looks like we'll be parting ways so soon. Thankfully, our journey becomes much more open ended as we get to slaughter some local fauna, steal their fruits and veggies, painfully climb things with the world's tiniest stamina bar. Ooh, that's kind of small and continue to commit genocide on our friendly, club-wielding neighbors. Still, since my main goal here is to reach AR-25 as fast as I could, I decided to reduce the dilly-dallying and to just follow the not-so-suspicious eye-patched man from earlier. And after breaking and entering into some locals' homes and murdering them in cold blood to steal their stuff, not-so-suspicious eye-patched man decides this is a good reflection of Topeto's character and decides to join our motley crew of home invaders and murderers. Now, most of you probably know that I've been playing Genshin Impact for a while. I mean, just look at how much of my life I've dedicated to this game. Oh my god. And I actually completely forgot how the early game feels. Compared to future regions, I absolutely love the pacing of Mondstadt. There are only 66 Animo Oculi, which you should absolutely be collecting as these things provide you with massive rewards such as more stamina on your stamina bar. This is magnitudes better than collecting the 272 Dendro Oculus in a future region called Sumeru, which also gives much, much worse rewards too. Chests in Monset are also quick and straightforward, and you're rewarded very quickly for the amount of time you spend lighting torches and slaughtering locals for their stuff. At this point in the game, the best use of my time was simply following the main Archon quest, and when I needed more adventure rank to continue the Archon quest, I just went to explore the map. Each waypoint you unlock provides 50 adventure rank experience, and when there are 447 teleport waypoints, well, you've got a ton of adventure rank experience available to you by simply exploring the map. And of course, there will be plenty of cute little critters to murder along your path and confounding puzzles to solve for plenty of additional adventure rank experience and loot. One mistake I did make was not accepting as many various side quests in Mondstadt as early as possible, as exploring while also fulfilling side quests is more efficient than simply one or the other. Also, adventure rank 8 is an important milestone, as you unlock the ability to spend your resin with the experience leyline. 
So I went off to spend some of my resin on the ley lines, which provide 100 adventure rank EXP for every 20 resin you need. I highly recommend doing this as soon as possible because otherwise your resin will overcap and be completely wasted. Next we managed to hit adventure rank 10, which is the next major milestone, as you'll automatically be sent 10 regular wishes in the mail, which is the perfect opportunity to add a new character to my roster. The Sacrificial Fragments? Seriously? Oh well, I guess Lisa gets a new book to read. Well, it looks like I'm stuck with the same starting four characters for quite some time. I was really hoping for a new character to add some variety, but alas, the Sacrificial Fragments certainly isn't a new character. At this point, I spent about 1 hour and 40 minutes playing through this with no hope for a new character for quite some time. I began to alternate my activities between the main story quests, various convenient side quests, and exploration. So none of these specific activities become overly tedious. Now my goal is to make it to Li Yue without getting too distracted by all the shiny things along the way. Li Yue is the second region in Teyvat, and collecting these Geo Oculus is still very important and very rewarding, as these also increase your maximum stamina and provide you with plenty of experience and loot. I get bored of bee hopping for an hour straight and decide to head back to my date Hola. with Mondstadt's local librarian mommy, Lisa, where I forcibly gave her a new pair of bloomers. I'm sure she loved that gift. And that's absolutely why we're going to get a second date with her, right? Another super important thing for progression is your adventure handbook. These simple tasks hand out adventure rank experience like candy and are a great tutorial for learning the game. Dailies are also unlocked at Adventure Rank 12, which are a great source of a lot of Adventure Rank experience. Anyway, after another 2-3 to three hours of collecting miscellaneous trinkets, we finally made it to the climax of Mondstadt's story, popping a giant zit. Seriously, this whole incident could have been avoided if Devalon just went to see a dragon dermatologist for his back knee. Now, I completely forgot about this fight because I think my inner trauma had suppressed this. But oh my god, this is the worst fight in the entire game. Devalon is just flying around shooting air bullets at you, which do negligible damage and feel like air, as you just float around waiting for the fight to progress for about five entire minutes. Thank the heavenly principles that we will never have to do a fight like this ever again. Anyway, after Devalon's long overdue visit with the dermatologist, we're able to pop the largest dragon zit in Teyvat, and we're able to continue our journey of scrounging up every bit of adventure rank experience that we can. Oh, and a local pop idol decided to join our crew. After bee hopping for another couple of hours, I made it to adventure rank 20 with around 6.9 nice hours of playtime. It's finally time to unlock the Spiral Abyss. Spiral Abyss provides a large amount of rewards the first time you clear it, and you can also unlock both Xiangling and Kolei at Spiral Abyss 3 and 4. However, after a bit of time in Spiral Abyss, I realized that I should probably level 250 before going for Xiangling and Kolei as the enemies are starting to outscale my team significantly. Adventure rank 20 is also a very important rank for new players to hit. This unlocked all the current events, which means you're able to get a large amount of event rewards and a 4 star Liyue character selector ticket if you started playing during this patch. It also means that you need to spend an extra half an hour doing the event mission, which I find kind of funny because we seem to be buddy buddy with all these characters who Topeto literally hasn't even met yet. Yep, the Archon quest for Li Yue starts at Adventure Rank 22, but here we are chatting up Kaching like we're good old buddies who save Li Yue or together or something. Speaking of which, after some more exploration on my journey to Adventure Rank 22, I begged, pillaged, and stole enough Primo Gems for another 10 pole. And then this happened. Hell yeah, this actually felt exhilarating as a free to play player to get the character that I wanted. And in this case, the bird mommy herself, Shen Yun. I went for her instead of Nahida because of Shen Yun's incredible exploration skills and the fact that she's an all in one character. 
able to be a healer, a DPS, and a support all at the same time. And I had absolutely no regrets. Exploring Liyue's mountains with our bird mommy was way easier than I remembered, and I could finally stop bee hopping everywhere in the overworld. Unlike my whale account where I would just buy everything, I felt a much stronger sense of attachment to my first 5 star character on this account. Getting lucky with this really made this playthrough so, so worth it. <laughs> Now, getting up to adventure rank 25 at this point was just a trivial task, especially with double animo and one of them being one of the best exploration characters in the game. So how would I rank my free to play new player experience? Well, most of it was fairly enjoyable. Both Mondstadt and Liyue have felt very rewarding to explore, having a reasonable amount of oculus to reward ratio and with most of the chests being tier two or higher. I actually unlocked waypoints all across the map, like over in Fontaine as well, but after just a few minutes there, I realized just how incredibly inefficient farming adventure rank there was. Puzzles take two to three times longer than the ones in the early game, and they give you worse quality chests. So that's my early game advice. If you want to level up quickly and efficiently, stick to the first couple of regions in the game, and focus on the Archon quests when possible. Always spend your resin and get to exploring once you're at a roadblock. I did find that going for waypoints across Teyvat, like further into Liyue and the Chasm, or even all the way into Fontaine, to also be a reasonable use of time, as you'll need to unlock all these waypoints eventually, and each one provides a generous 50 adventure rank experience. Also, prioritize the missions in the Adventures Handbook as well, as those missions will power you up enough to handle the content, and they provide a ton of adventure rank experience based on the time spent. Now the highlight to this entire journey was definitely pulling Shenyun and utilizing her in exploration afterwards. It felt like I was playing an entirely different game as a new character with Shenyun, since she makes exploration such a trivial task. While Nahida is debatably better in combat, frankly speaking in the early and mid game, you spend a ton more of your time exploring the overworld instead of in the end game combat scenarios. And trust me when I say that Shenyun is one of the best exploration characters in the game. And another tip for new players is to save a few key 3 star weapons that you'll be pulling from the gacha. Namely, the Thrilling Tales of Dragon Slayers is one of the best 3 star catalysts in the game, and the Harbinger of Dawn is actually a pretty solid DPS sword while being a 3 star rarity sword. In total, it took me 13 hours and 46 minutes to hit Adventure Rank 25. I did 35 Standard Banner Summons and 30 Shenyun Banner Summons. Shenyun came home extremely early, and to be honest, this means that most free-to-play players could end up not getting a single 5-star character for a really, really long time, since the hard pity for a 5-star character on the featured banner is 90 poles. Let me know how long it took you to get your first 5-star character in Genshin Impact. Anyway, let me know if you're a new player and you found this journey slash guide to be useful. Alternatively, if you're a regular viewer of mine, let me know if you'd like to see more of my free to play adventures. As always, I appreciate every single one of you. This is I Went to Lose, signing out. Huh. <laughs>